Howdy there, it's Ed Gamble and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. We are chatting about Taskmaster Series 6, Episode 7, getting to the real crux of Series 6 now and we're absolutely loving going through these old episodes and picking them apart. Today's special guest to join me in this in this archaeological dig through the history of Taskmaster is the wonderful Sarah Kendall. Yes, Sarah's my special guest, absolutely wonderful comedian, writer. Go and watch Frayed when you get a chance. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Sarah was, of course, champion of Series 11. She's absolutely brilliant. Can't wait to talk to her. So let's get on with it. Series 6, Episode 7 with Sarah Kendall. Welcome back, Sarah Kendall, to the Taskmaster Hello. podcast. There's a reason, Sarah, that you are champion of Series 11. Yes, yes, there is. The other, the and incredibly random scoring process. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how's how's it been going being being champion? Are you uh, are you enjoying you know being champion? Is the t- tour of the world been going well? Well, actually, Ed, I have reached what I can only call the most aggravating level of fame, which is people walk up to me when they're drunk and say, "Why do I know you?" And then <laughs> it's the it is the worst form of of, of fame. It's like it's just mm. a lo- it's a rung below D list where they kind of remember you and they don't know why. And then I have to go. Um, was it? Uh, would I lie to you? Was it uh, Taskmaster? Nine times out of ten, it's Taskmaster. Yeah. Then they go on to tell me their uh, their favorite contestants, um, and then. <laughs> The really embarrassing thing is when I go, is it Taskmaster? And then after a while we figure out they actually just know me socially because they met me <laughs> like at the Phoenix Bar in 2011. Although that this is better than the last time we spoke because the last time we spoke was sort of right in the aftermath of uh, of you winning Taskmaster and you said the most that most people would come up to you and just say hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the other thing. Uh, and what was aggravating about that was that I had particularly bad hair at the time because I had my post frayed haircut, mm. and now now my hair has grown back. Um, I'm I, I'm sort of it, uh, people aren't doing the hair joke as much now. That's kind of weird. Now I become an even more distant memory because I think there's been four seasons of Taskmaster. They just don't know who I am. Also, the hair. I mean, the hair is looking absolutely magnificent, Sarah. I've got Thanks to say. Thanks so much, uh, Ed. I know, I know. I think it's such a feature now <laughs> yeah. that almost people would not mention it because they'd be like, people mention that must mention that a lot. So I think people <laughs> have probably reined it back in. It's great. I mean, I I do feel very fortunate. I do, it's, it's a good head of hair. Um, but when it, but if people do compliment my hair, I feel compelled to tell them the bad, the the, the downside to having a lot of hair. Like I start talking about my sweat problems. My general hairiness. People don't want to hear a middle-aged woman tell them about their general hairiness. I'm like, mate. General hairiness. Jesus Christ, getting ready for summer's no fun. You know, like wink, wink, and then they're like, okay, we're done here. Sort of... <laughs> where, where do I know you from? Um... <laughs> so let's. I mean, let's chat. Let's chat about series six. Uh, how do you think you would have fared against people in this lineup? Because obviously you're champion of series eleven. Do you do you mm. think there would have been anyone in series six who could have beaten you? Were they in the oh, same? Oh, all of them, all of them. Uh, it, it'd be a doddle for every single one of them. Um, <laughs> I'm very intimidated by Russell Howard's um, competitive, sporty, just his general sportsman vibe. Um, yeah. I know. I know a couple of comedians who are also sort of semi-professional sports people. And um, they're, they're, they're built differently. There's a champion, mm. there's a, a drive to succeed and a discipline there, which I um, I want to emulate and I can't, but I, I like being around it, but I don't want to be around it too much. It's a bit, it's just a bit much. You know, they're just winners. They win. I'm describing winners. I find winners exhausting. I, I think, mate, yeah, Russell's always a threat, I think, in this series. Mm. I feel like Russell and Lisa would have put up a good fight against you. I don't think they necessarily would have beaten you. Actually, Lisa would destroy anyone, to be honest. Um, Lisa's good. She's good. She's so good. She's so good. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're really doing yourself a disservice if you don't think you could have beaten Asim. Um because mm. Asim's great, he's wonderful, but I really yeah. do think a bag of marbles could beat Asim at Taskmaster. I do see shades of myself in him, though. Like, I do, like, when you go, I haven't got a plan, what I have is a terrible plan, so I'm going to double down on the terrible plan. 
which For is sure. basically yeah. my is pretty much my recollection of Taskmaster. Um, yeah. The the absence of a plan B, so doubling down on a catastrophic plan A. Uh, so I get that, and I really feel for him when he's like dumbly down on a stupid idea. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know. I he's know. wonderful. He's such good value, and he's very sweet, and he, he does try really hard. But I think you could have beaten him, is what I'm saying. Maybe. Now. And Alice, Alice has also got. She's got the slight. She doesn't read. She didn't read the task properly. Mm, um, totally. In, in one of it, so I kind of when I was watching that, I the one thing that I was really um, careful about was I would read the task like a dozen times before I put the card down. So I think maybe I, I'd, I'd maybe trip her up a couple of times because I get the feeling she might go, okay, time starts now, a little too soon, a few too many times. Yeah, that definitely happens this episode. We'll uh, we'll talk about that later. She absolutely loses her mind, does Alice. She did, um, yeah, proper. Yeah. So let's crack on with talking about this episode. Uh, First up is the prize task, which is the scariest thing from your kitchen. Um, (laughs) Quite straightforward, but also quite offbeat, prize task wise. Um, Now, when you you first saw this, Sarah, was there anything that sprung to mind in your kitchen uh, that you thought you could have brought in? Are you you in your, you're in your kitchen now. I can see see your kitchen behind Mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I am. I am in my kitchen. Um, Alice's thing that she brought in, I've got this thing that, um, so garbage day is a Tuesday and there are mm-hmm. certain items that have gone off on like last Thursday, but I've left them in my fridge going, well, I don't want it stinking out the garbage bin. The bin. Yeah. Classic. Right. So right yeah. now in my fridge, I could get you a half a tuna mayo sandwich that went off, I think last Wednesday. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty potent. Uh, I should also, have just walked You sort it, of went to get out of your seat. You went to get out of your seat there, Sarah. Yeah, let's go if... have a look. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, my God. Look at the... Oh, mate. Look, look at the tuna. Oh, dude, it's gone, like, black. Yeah, I know. It's like Marmite. It looks like a Marmite sandwich. Don't put it near your face. Oh, oh, it, oh it smells no, smell so it. bad. It really <laughs> smells so bad. It smells... Fuck. Oh, that is... It's really hard to listen to this. Ready? Okay, I'm going to bash the pen against it. Ready? All right. Oh my God. That's, did you hear that? Yeah. That, that's yeah. better than Alice's ham, to be honest, because Alice brought well, in the old problem, ham. That's... I think she was stitched up a little bit with the production there. They showed a picture of ham that didn't look off. I yes. think if they had shown a picture of really off ham, I think mm-hmm. it might have been. Sandwich, sandwich been going back in, the, back in the fridge? Well, it's Monday. Tuesday is garbage day. I said that. It's going yeah, in the garbage no, tonight. Enough. Feels mad um, to take it out of the fridge and then put it back in, though, doesn't it? Especially It does, though. But do you ever do that? Do you ever go, I'll just leave it in until garbage night? Oh, yeah, totally. That's the yeah, thing, yeah. right? No, it would do that, yeah, for sure. Because okay, otherwise, okay. You, you don't want to stink out your bin. But I would never get it out on a podcast, smell it, nearly wretch, and then put it back in the fridge. That's just me. Well, you work in entertainment. I think you would. So we can leave it at that. Okay, yeah, you're ab- you're above that. Yeah, okay. Very entertaining. Yeah. Um, you also, in your kitchen, look like you've got a couple of potential Tim Vine kitchen cupboard doors there. I laugh so much at that, mainly because of how mean Greg was. Like, yeah. The- it was, I get it, like, I, I get those things that you, you know, I mean, and also Tim Vine, you know, he hasn't got a hell of a lot of hair on head, so I think a, a hinge that sticks out on a bald head, it's a bit more painful. Yeah, like, a little a little bit painful. Um, also, I liked that, <laughs> the thing is, one, if you bring in the cupboard door as the prize, <laughs> once it's divorced from the kitchen, it's not really scary anymore, is it? Because it's not going to bump his head. Yeah. What, what what I needed to see was Tim Vine bumping his head on it, and then yeah. I and you know and that the way balding heads because there's no fat there it's just skin over skull, and just the little tear of skin right near the skull that'd be yeah. pretty bad. Do you, you imagine Tim Vine's head being like a sort of ninety year old man's head with like crepe paper skin? Tim Vine is it the opposite of Sarah Kendall? <laughs> That's you have true. the Sarah Kendall skull, and then you have the Tim Vine. He was already blonde, so that's already pretty fair. Yeah. But he's a balding blonde guy. I mean, you can't get further apart on the hair spectrum. That's true. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. A video of him at home 
bumping yeah. his head on the kitchen cupboard would it be because yeah. i'm obsessed with tim vine at home anyway i just want to, i want to see a 24 <laughs> hours in the life of tim vine at home i like lisa's thing about um the the blender as well i just think things like that probably more than a dozen times a day what if i just stopped cutting this and cut my finger instead what if i um slammed my ear in the kettle i don't know i'm just constantly thinking about things like that like oh, imagine if i just stuck my finger in that oh that'd be really painful like i get what, where just, she's what, coming from by accident or that little sort of thought where you're like i could just do yeah. that now what? Yeah, yeah 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 if i just went a bit mad for a nanosecond and just went yeah what the hell just, yeah, yeah. I, I liked I liked that the way she sold it was very good. Essentially, she just brought in a blender, right? But the the fact yes. that it had that that story and the fake finger as well really really yeah. added something. Yes, I am. Um, I would bring in a mandolin if I was going down the same path as a mandolin. Uh, Lisa. Yeah, but we threw ours out, so it's one of those boards. It's like a cutting board. It's got a slightly raised blade, and yeah. it's what you'd use to thinly slice maybe. <gasps> Uh, a potato or a or an oh. onion or something like that and i was slicing potatoes for potato dofen uh. with easter sunday last year and yeah. i basically and you see my thumb slightly raised there my thumb yeah. oh, went oh, under God. the potato and big huge chunk just hanging off um and i had to have eight stitches in my thumb oh wow Mad, right? yeah. imagine if that had been your bell end right if i'd been slicing potatoes with my bell end like normal yeah, that would have that would have been so awful. That'd if that be had been so my bad, bad Sarah, I would have deserved everything I would have got. I think they would have been well within their rights at the hospital to send me home. Yeah, we're not no stitching treatment. that up. Here's 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 a we're needle. Here's some up. thread. You do it yourself, buddy. <laughs> I always think stuff like that. Imagine if that was a vagina or a bell end getting caught in that. I know. What is that? Do you think that? <laughs> no, I don't think I do. You know. Oh. So every time you see something dangerous, you think, <laughs> yeah. imagine if imagine, that was a vagina or a balloon game. Imagine if my tits got caught in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Asim brought in some fan art of himself, which he has up in the kitchen. Oh, um, I love his I mean, fan art. I love any fan art. Any fan art. Great. It's terrifying, isn't it? Yeah. When you get the dimensions just a bit wrong... But you're still almost there. It's like um uh, like a sort of um like an alternate universe version of him. Yeah, you know, totally. like like another parallel him in another reality. That's what I find yeah. like a bit frightening about it. Did you ever get people on Twitter doing fan art, and you're like, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. So I don't when whenever I get one that's like from clearly someone who's a very talented artist. Mm. Clearly, what they what they're doing is they are good at art. They like to draw things or they like to paint things, and they have happened to land on you in some of the things that they're painting. So that makes sense. Mm. The scary ones are when they can't draw for shit because <laughs> they've they've obviously gone. I'm going to draw Ed, even though I cannot draw, and those are the ones you want to watch out for. Do you know what I think is interesting though? I think if you couldn't draw and you started drawing a Sarah, you'd end up with an Ed. Discuss. Yes, we've of course we've talked about this that, that yeah. uh, we're basically the same but with different hair. Ah. Um, yeah. So, ah. so you're saying that I'm you gone wrong, and I am you gone wrong. <laughs> so a bad drawer sitting down with you would end up with a Sarah. I'd go, yeah. oh my god, who drew this picture of me? But like that's meant to be me. Uh, yeah, great. I love yeah. that. What? what? Yeah. We're <laughs> what like multiverse. You look like someone. We're yeah, the we're multiverse, multiverse Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah. That's good. I love it. Yeah, it's um, I also like that Asim's was covered in food stains as well. So you knew so it was in his kitchen. That's right. It's meant to ward him off going but to the fridge, but it's splattered in peanut oil. Yeah. yeah. You, went and got, you went and got the thing from the fridge though, didn't you? Yeah. So good. I really like Russell's because it was a good interpretation of scary. Uh, having the doggy cam uh, in the kitchen that his girlfriend uses to spy on him. Uh we're, it's exactly the sort of thing that my wife would do. Really? Like we've got burglar alarm cameras and stuff. Yeah, she'd think it was hilarious to look at one of the cameras and then send me a screen grab of it. She would absolutely love to do that. Do you have cameras in... Do you have that sort of setup? We've got we've got burglar alarm cameras, yeah. So I think technically oh, she wow. could do that. She'd have to make sure that I was going to be in the kitchen, but it's not like a 24-hour uh, yeah, yeah, live yeah. feed. Oh, okay. That's great, though. Um, the first thing I was thinking, though, I don't know why, whenever people have got things like doggy cams and stuff, I always just think, why, what part of 
that being a dog don't you understand? Like, I'm so confused by the amount of attention people lavish on their dogs these days. There's just no version of that that I can identify with from my upbringing. You had a dog. You just It's just a dog. It, you know, you don't have a camera to watch it. It's, it's, it's insane. This is exactly the sort of thing that I should have predicted that you'd get angry about. Yeah, I'm fur- I'm so sick of people and their dogs. I've had it. I've had a gutful. Good. So yeah, I think the I think the doggy cam it is it's scary and that you'd be scared to do whatever you wanted around your flat because you know that someone's always watching. That's what I found scary about that. I would definitely get busted picking my nose deep, like a mm. deep exploration nose pick, which is what I like. If no one's watching and I think there's gold to be recovered, I'll go for it. You got to get in there, right? Yeah, I wouldn't um, want I do that when I'm driving. Listen. When I'm driving is the worst time for that, I think. Do you know what I think is the difference when when I'm driving? I'd do it with the thumb, and then for yeah. some reason that's acceptable. But the index finger, no way. You can do yeah, a thumb. Thumb's, right. thumb's okay if you're driving. I think yeah. that's understood with motorists. Yeah. That a light exploration with the thumb, you can accept that. <laughs> yeah, perfect. It's good. It's good to get these rules out there. Yeah. Um. Well, it was five points for Russell, uh, four points for Asim, three points for Lisa, two points for Alice, and one mm. point for Tim's dodgy kitchen cupboard. Alice, may we start with you? Uh, the scary thing that I've bought from my kitchen is some ham that I left out in the sun. Are you ready to see Alice's smelly, sweaty ham? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh. I don't think there's anything scarier than biting into a sandwich that's been left out to more than room temperature, and well, the hammer's changed I'm sorry, changed there is state. something scarier than that. Is there? Werewolf being attacked by a bear was what I was thinking. Was no, but I think you know what's going to happen there with the ham sandwich. That's a ticking time bomb. You don't know. I'd rather take my risk with a bit of minor food poisoning than having my face bitten off. <laughs> Task one, knock the bales off the stumps. You have a Ugh. maximum of one over. You must make your attempt from behind this stump. No stumps may be moved. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. Yeah. Cricket fan, Sarah Kendall? Um, as an Australian, uh, yes, in a car. Like, I didn't have cricket nuts in my family, but we it was just always there. It was like the white noise of my upbringing. Like, I was always mm-hmm. aware of what the results were and who the who the cricketers were. And, and I must say that um, I know it wouldn't have been the clever way to do it, but I absolutely would have chucked all six balls in quick succession. Yeah. I just yeah. would have had a crack I- at it. I think you've got to with the balls right there, right? The dream mm. is to do it. The dream is to is to rustle it, right? Oh my god! I that was the most thrilling television of my life. <laughs> <laughs> there, I've incredible. said it. I've and the said fact it. that the fact that before, um, before he did it, he said, "I'll get it in one," I reckon, and then oh. he did. It was incredible. I mean, I've always, I've always had a lot of time for Russell. I've always liked him a lot, but I liked him so much more for that. Everything, and also, <laughs> even the way he bowled, he didn't look like he was going to be great. Like there wasn't like a kind of, he wasn't doing anything that kind of suggested, oh, he's going to be a really good bowler. He just kind there of were no did flourishes. A very, no, it was just a very kind of loose, loosey goosey kind of, and then bang, he just got it. Oh, I just thrilling, thrilling television. Five out of five, loved it. Utterly thrilling, and came. I know that I came I, hard. <laughs> <laughs> we interviewed Rusk for this podcast, and I believe that moment came up as probably his favourite moment in the whole thing because you've yeah. got to be pleased with that, even though he was wearing he was wearing those glasses, which he massively regrets. Um, mm, but mm, even mm. even it even made the glasses seem cool. So well the whole done, thing, Russell. the whole thing was it was just fantastic, and that for me would have been the absolute wet dream of how what I would have done is gone. I reckon I'm going to get it in one, and then all six balls would have gone over the fence. Like yeah. that's how that's how that fantasy would play out with me. Can I tell you what I genuinely would have done? And I've seen this episode multiple times, and I still yeah. had the same thought, and I would have been disqualified yeah. because I don't think I would have grabbed the the stump from one end yeah. and just f- hoid it at the yeah. other stumps, and you can't right. move any of the stumps, but you're not yeah. allowed to move any of them. But yeah. first thing I would have done would be just whip that stump and just try and get it like catapulting <laughs> towards the and not to knock the bales over would have been awful because you know i'm just been, brute 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I understand. Like also, there's also that part of you that you, that I find undeniable is that we are working in a televisual medium that you want it to be visually arresting. Like you kind of like, it's, it's not a podcast, it's television. So yeah. you sort of want to do something that, that might look a bit spectacular. Do you know what would have been amazing? And I wouldn't have had the presence of mind to do it on the day, but to pick up the largest ball and then throw it at Alex's dick. Imagine if you'd done that. <laughs> Imagine if you'd done that. You'd sort of go, oh, I'll just select the ball. And then just throw on, throw on it at his, at his bell end. It's all, it's it's the awful thing, isn't it? Where yeah. because it's TV, you feel like no one can get hurt or nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Um, we had to do a task in series nine where we had to. Alex was in a wheelie bin, and there were five wheelie bins, <laughs> and we only had a certain amount of things we could do. Mm. Um, we could do to find out which wheelie bin he was in, and one of them, I think, you, you're allowed to like throw a pan at one of the wheelie bins, <laughs> and I and I got the pan. I got the pan, Sarah, and I'm not joking. I threw it as hard as I could. And it's it when people watch it, I was like, people think this is hilarious. And the whole audience went like, ooh. Because he oh, could have he yeah. wasn't in that wheelie bin, luckily. Yeah. But if he had been, that could have the it, it was so aggressive. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, I love doing it. I love doing it. <laughs> um Tim thought it through a little bit more. I think he did try the balls, but then he started to think about it and he got the rope yeah. and he tied it to the carpet and then tied it around so the stump and yeah. pulled the carpet. That Great. was good. That was really good. It was, I mean, his was, of, of the ways to play it, I'd say Russell's was the most exciting and then Tim Tim's was the like, yeah, that's like, he's read the thing and he's yeah. outsmarted the question. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that was really quicker, well. obviously, but. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he took his time, but yeah, fair enough. Four points, um, because no one else got any points. Because oh Arsenal no, I loved both. Yeah, yeah, but Lisa getting the oil drum—that was really funny. That was really well. Funny. That's the thing. Asim and Alice failed, but then if you're gonna fail, you want to fail like an absolute punk, <laughs> right? And, yes. And that's it's another one where Lisa got a cob on. She she just given up on it. She knew what was going on, and yeah. she was like, "Well, I'm gonna knock him over, and I'm gonna cheat while I'm doing it." And it was brilliant. Oh. Yeah, it was really funny. That was the one that had me. That that's the one that had me laughing the most. It was just also the way she disappeared and reappe- reappeared with an oil drum. Yeah, there was something about that kind of disappearance and reappearance with the prop. You're like, oh, an oil drum. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and then just steamrolling over it was perfect. What we found out about Elisa in the series is she's amazing at Taskmaster. She's absolutely brilliant. She's inventive. She's very clever funny but she has a certain level of patience for things and if anything crosses that line she's done yeah it doesn't matter what's going on she's done she will not she will not be made a fool of just yeah get it done which is great yeah i think that's really uh impressive because i'm i I will tolerate something being dreadful for a very long time i'll keep i'll keep as as evidenced by many of my tasks i will keep trying and drilling down into failure yeah, and mine, and mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was naught points for Lisa, naught points for Asim, naught points for Alice, four points for Tim, and five points, of course, for Russell Howard. Difficult not to be impressed, I suppose, <laughs> because you were also delighted by uh, Russell's skills. You will have missed his outline, which was "Call me when I'm needed." <laughs> I've never done that before. It was it was exhilarating. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot easier when there's no batsman. <laughs> Task two, draw a picture of the contents of this box. You may not open the box or look inside. Also, you get a bonus point if you can name the person represented by the contents of the box. You have 10 Mm -hmm. minutes. Your time starts now. This one made me feel gross, Sarah. Would you have got David Attenborough? Were you watching it going David Attenborough? I tell you what, I think I I would have given it a good go. And I tell you why, because obviously Tim was going to get it. That was built for him. Yeah. Um, Russ... Russell got it as well. And here's why I think Russell got it. Because Russell did Mock the Week for so long. I've also done Mock the Week a lot. You spend so long sitting there with those scenes we'd like to see every week with similar uh, similar categories, desperately trying to come up with anything, just going like, right, things are unlikely to hear on a nature programme. David Attenborough. Ha- Atten- how can you? Attenborough. Atten- 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 like, he gotcha. would have thought of that at some point, at some point. It's just right. like deconstructing every single word. Sure. So I think I could have given that one a go. 
See, uh, the wet bra would have been what would have thrown me off getting it correct because I'd be going, right, the wet, this bra is wet for a reason. So it's probably yeah. not David Attenborough because it, it's... Yeah. I, that, that, but I, I think that might have tripped me up with the word thing. The wet, the wet thing yeah. is, and I don't think will ever be beaten, I think it is the weirdest joke that's ever been on so Tarsimus. So funny. That, it was so it's funny. It's so funny. Yeah. No, no explanation ever. No. You know how when someone becomes uh, knighted, they are wet. You call them wet. Yeah. wet. You call them wet Lewis <laughs> Hamilton. No, that's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. So funny. Yeah, um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. But it, like in terms of getting the answer, I think it might have thrown me. I think. Yes. Um. I mean, everyone's paintings, obviously a range of paintings. This is a, a very art-based challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa just, this was one of the ones where it was just Lisa in her element, I think. Yes, um, yes. And just being able to draw perfectly. Yeah. yeah, being able to draw is, is definitely, I mean, that's going to help you out enormously. Can you draw? Not not really. I, no. I, I think I, I'm, I'd be somewhere in between. I think I'd maybe th- three points on this. I could certainly draw better than Asim, I think. Asim's was pretty um, bad, as was Russell's. Russell's hat was, yeah. uh, I mean, for that to be a pictorial representation of a hat, I yeah, I mean, that was, that was maddening. I, I, I think that that's the same guy who could bowl, who could do such things with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a ball, and that's what happens when he picks up a pen. Yeah, it's, it's mad, I mean, isn't it? It's the random nature of genius. And hands, the random nature of hands, I suppose, mm. as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Asim, Asim guesses flashlight, so I don't know what was going on there. What was that? Imagine, yeah. imagine if you went to a Taskmaster task and they put a flashlight in a box and said, guess that. <laughs> he must have known that it wasn't going to be a flashlight. But again, I saw, I saw big elements of myself that the first thing he did yeah. was sniffed his hand. He touched yeah. it, went... <laughs> what's that and then had to sniff his hand i mean the first thing i did when i got the sandwich out of the fridge was i'm gonna sniff it yeah so i i feel we like all, I re- we all remember i really get at him i get that kind of Ugh, what's that i'm gonna smell i'm gonna lick it i'm gonna put it in my ear i'm gonna really yeah. throw myself into this oh i love uh, him absolutely yes. love him yeah. Um, yeah. Russell's drawing absolutely awful as well, but he got he got uh, David Hattenbrah, so um, so it was it was a bonus pass. point for him as well. Who did the the Tim wonky did... at ET? E- ET was that Tim? Yeah, uh, that was Tim. I think uh, with the weird breasts um, that he'd drawn as well. I think hadn't he? Uh, um... Yeah, he drawn the weird weird bra, hadn't he? The, oh the yes. Sort of, the... Yeah, two two pieces of cloth on a string. <laughs> So great. It was so great. Uh, yeah, it was like beige, sort of beige triangles hanging off a line. Yeah. Um, but then I think if I had to draw a, a bra, I'd struggle. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's rare, I'm rarely called upon to draw a bra, I'll be honest. Mm. Alice did a very uh, a very accurate painting. It was very good, actually. I thought oh, that was good, box. her drawing. With the lines. Yeah, with the actual box, yeah, which was, was not good. what was asked for, but I think it's a little bonus that, that deserved recognising. Mm. She looks to um, me like um, she's got a bit of art school. There's something about her that's a little bit art school to me. Very artistic, for sure, I think. She's good, and very yeah, precise yeah. as well. It's good. Very precise. It was one point for Asim, two points for Russell, four points for Tim, four points for Alice, and five points for Lisa. Bra, man, hat. Sorry, what, what name are you saying there? Bar, I was just, no, I was just saying Barbara Streisand, but bar, bra, bar, bra. Hat bra, bra hat statue. Statue bra hat. What, what does a wet, what does wet bra mean? It's bra, bra, Windsor. <laughs> Fur bra, like Ursula Andres, you think of maybe. Mahatma bra, Gandhi. <laughs> okay, my guess is Margaret Thatcher. Attenborough, Attenborough, David, David, Attenborough. That's my guess. David Attenborough. Task three. It's a team task. Part one, write down as many obscure animals as possible. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Part two, guess the animals your teammate has on their list. Your teammate must only use mime. They may not write anything down or show you the list. You have 10 minutes. Most animals guest wins. Your time starts now. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you now. 
let's talk about this straight away because I love it so much. I think yeah. this features one of my favorite moments in all of Taskmaster history. Go on. Um, and it's it's the moment that Asim realizes what he's done <laughs> by making up all those animals. <laughs> <laughs> and they're reading out that he has to mime them. And he does this tiny little look to the camera that is so real and so honest and is like, is a split second, but encapsulated within that is everything. Yeah. It's, I think it, oh, yeah, it was almost on the word anorexic with anorexic elephant. It's literally when they're going, uh, your teammate must act all those animals out. And you just see him go, look to the camera like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> It's the reason why The Office is such a good show. It happened in yeah. re actual real life. It was it's absolutely so incredible. Yeah, he deadpanned oh, into camera. I mean, yeah, yeah, he deadpanned into camera, and he didn't mean to because he'd he'd he was he was thought he was being smart and silly and coming up with blue dog, three eyed raven, anorexic elephant, and eight bollock cat, and yeah. then he had to act all of them out. And what's yeah. really funny about it is he does it quite well. <laughs> And they were cracking through. I mean, I don't know whether that's the trick of editing, but they seem to be cracking through it at a pretty decent pace. Yeah, I mean, they, they had 10 minutes uh, and, you know, they got eight right. Uh, right. Which, Actually, you know, that's not that impressive. But now you've said that. It's not, not that bad. impressive, but bear in, mind no. that, bear in mind that the other team got 11 and they had actual animals to work with. Although I'd never heard of a liger. I, I thought that Did that was a joke from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh no! It it is in Napoleon Dynamite, but it is it's also an animal. I thought um, he, I thought Napoleon Dynamite had invented a liger and drawn the picture of a liger. I didn't know it right. actually existed. Yeah. So so were you? So that did you look it up, or were you just surprised to find out that? I that was the moment ten years after twenty years after seeing that film that I went. Oh, it's an actual. It, it actually exists. <laughs> I thought I it was like it. a it was like a mythical animal like a dragon. That's yeah. what I thought I that's what I thought was happening in Napoleon Dynamite. So then when I saw Russell Howard go Liger, I thought, Oh, he, he's seen Napoleon he Dynamite. He loves Napoleon Dynamite. He yeah. lo he also <laughs> loves Napoleon Dynamite. And then she, then Alice has heard of it as well. Yeah. I was going, Hang on a second. Um, yeah, well, I had the same thing with piranhas. I was like, I thought they were invented for James Bond. Couldn't mm, believe it. Yeah, yeah, right? no. There that's it is. um yeah, and and there there they are, and other people have heard of them. But I did think I I got to say, like uh, I think I would have interpreted the thing the way Asim had interpreted it. I would have been making up animals. But it's obscure animals. It doesn't it doesn't say mythical animals or animals no. that you've come up with. They have to be oh. real. Obscure means real, just not mm. not the Here's first, the difference. not the go to animal. I would have read the task seven or eight times and then gone, ah, oh, obscure. But hearing the task the first time, like just watching it on TV, I would have yeah. gone, ah, oh, make it up. But you're right. I would have read the eight, task a couple of times. Eight cat. What is it? But then, it's fantastic what, TV. But then what do we call obscure? I suppose like the, the, the non-obscure animals, you know, be like cat, dog, cow. Mm. If you've Fish, been raised in a that. society where they have no... Okay, fair enough. Look, fair enough. I'm not going to get bogged down in this, which I would have if I had been playing it on Taskmaster. Um, Are you saying but, that I'm going to get cancelled for saying that a cat is not an obscure animal? Essentially, yes. That's where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm going to try to argue that most people have never heard of a cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Team Funk do very well, but Russell does make sounds, which I thought was interesting. I believe it said... The teammate must only use mime, and Russell was doing sounds, so I feel mm. like there should have been a point off there. Being a grumpy, a being a grumpy goose. I think I saw a sim do a bit of noise as well. I think he did a sort of a, almost like A B C, or I think he did he did a little bit of a prompt with one of well, the things. Well, give the guy a break. He had to mime eight bollock cat. You know, he needs exactly. something else. Look, I was not. Go <laughs> I wasn't going to get caught up in the technicality of that because I thought he's 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 okay. really yeah he's got a mountain to climb here. Uh, but they um, did it. I mean, they did. I was they so did impressed. It. Yeah. It was three points for Team Funk uh, and then two points somehow for Asim, Lisa and Tim. Blue Dog. Three-Eyed Raven. Three-Eyed Raven. Anorexic Elephant. Anorexic Elephant. A Bollock Cat. Eight Bollock Cat. Uh, Dodo. Laser Beam Turtle. Got your proper task now. Oh, 
Guess the animals that your teammate has on their list. Your teammate must only use mine. Your time starts now. Task four. Wearing the sweatband around your head at all times, tuck as many items in the kitchen inside your sweatband as possible. Then make a pancake with a diameter of at least nine inches and eat the whole pancake. You have two minutes to tuck things in your sweatband and then eight minutes to cook and eat your pancake. Most kitchen items successfully kept inside the sweatband wins. Your time starts now. Weird task. Love Difficult it. I, and weird. I feel like I would have got okay in this one. I would have at think? least, I think I would have got three points and above. I think I would have done well. So do you, are you good at making pancakes? Is this why you're confident? No, I think I would have instinctively. I, I mean, the hundreds and thousands was a absolute. I mean, that was that was a fantastic, you know, getting, you know, in terms of yeah. numbers of things in, in yeah. a headband. Um, but I think I would have just also done the pancake and eaten the whole pancake and singed my esophagus and got an ulcerated throat as a consequence like I would have done it. I would have, you know. I thought that was also great with the spoons, like the the spoons that were like there was like a measuring spoons. There were like six on the one thing. Yeah, yeah. You've another... got to go for for volume of thing. I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So that I, I think I would have done that bit well. But then when it came, I guess what they were hoping for with the task was that people were going to end up putting things they needed to make a pancake in the sweatband and then couldn't use them. I would have completely done that. Do you think you wouldn't have left a whisk for yourself or anything? It would have all been all been well, in the in the sweatband. It's hard to say because I don't know. If, well, like I don't know if you had a similar thing when you when you were doing your tasks, but I would be reading the task again and again and again, and then eventually they'd go, "You're going to have to do time starts now and stop reading the." Because I was so obsessed with getting it right. So yeah. I think maybe I would have made that mistake and then thought about it. like I still would have been thinking whilst the director was going, "Sarah, time starts now." Like. Yeah, is my yeah. is my guess. Um, but I, I never used to reread. I pretty much just used to read it once, and I would I'd pick it up during the task if I was suddenly confused, or I'd go back yeah. and flick over. Yeah, uh, but but never multiple times to start with. You're a good twenty five years younger than me, so that is that's why, true. Actually, that is why that has happened that way. I did have to read it a couple of times to get it in my head. Um, but I, yeah, I think. I think I would have put all the necessary implements in my headband in in haste. Yeah. In my haste. Um, but you can, you know, I would have made the pancake with my hands and just eaten that glob of shit. <laughs> this is another one where Lisa just proves she's very efficient and there's never mm. chaos when Lisa's no. around. No. Everything she does, she means. There's never a panic, there's never a flap. And yeah. she does incredibly well here. She puts the things in her headband. She makes a pancake and she manages to eat three quarters of it. She smashes it, basically. She was so good. And even uh, running it under cold water, I wouldn't have thought of that. I would have thought, no, the pain is good. Let the pain work to to fuel you on to greatness, is what my stupid brain would have been thinking. But she just, like, the tap water, I was like, oh, yeah, that's really good. Well done. I liked Tim Vine cooling it down with Nutella. That was good. I mean, him and Russell were just making... They were adding things to it. They were flavouring. Russell put banana in the batter, which I've Why? never seen before. Why did he do that? That made it a bigger oh, task. Know. It made it huge. And then both of them had four eggs in it as well. So I think Russell out loud said it's sort of like an omelette. Not really. No. <laughs> it's nothing It's nothing like an omelette. It's like Was a cake. That... It's, almost like, it's almost like a cake that you make in a pan, Russell. Not an omelette. That's, that's right. And Alice lost her mind. She just lost her mind halfway through the task. Oh, my God. I don't yeah. know what she was doing. It's sort of iconic. It was like a scene from Flashdance or something. Yeah. She's yeah. shaking her head around, like going crazy, like some yeah. sort of dance film. Uh, yeah. And then had to be sort of shaken out of this fug. So it, you're, yeah. not, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to keep everything in. It's amazing. Well, I think one, like a spoon fell out and then something else fell out. And then she just started shaking it out. As you say, like some sort of, it, it felt filmic, like a kind of yeah. moment where the cooking just took over. And she got shimmy. lost. It was she amazing. got lost in the dance of cookery, and uh, and then they were like, <laughs> "But those part of the task is to keep them in your headband." She went, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, why did she think the headband was there? She thought she'd put it in, take them all out, and then cook the pancake. Didn't make any it, sense. I did laugh a lot at uh, at Tim Vine's. Uh, did he have a garbage bag? Was there a garbage bag in there? Or no? Yeah, was it there was a kitchen. Yeah, roll? I think he was. I think he stuffed some garbage bags in there. I mean, his vision was completely obscured. 
and he made the thickest pancake out of the out of the uh, lot of them. It was incredible. But he did he, he did pretty well. He got five points as well. And he always throws everything at it, Tim. That's what I love about him. Yeah, he's the opposite to Lisa in that Lisa's very calm and just gets on with it. Yeah, and Tim immediately flaps and just throws everything he can think of at the tasks, and it's it's great to watch. It is. It's so. I, I really, I, I, I genuinely, I was watching all the tasks going, oh, what, what, oh, what would I do? And the answer is always the same. My mind would go blank and yeah. then there would be some panicked thing that I just committed to because there was no other choice available. Like, And then yeah. I'm like, that's what this show is. That's kind of, I suddenly had this sort of eureka moment where I'm like, oh, that's what, that's what the show is. It's watching a mind in blind panic, generally. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, it was really. What was I a Sims? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what a Sims was. What was a Sims? Uh, well, he made a pancake. He managed to eat half of it, but it was so hot he had to squirt, <laughs> squirt an entire can nice. of squirty cream, cream into his mouth. And it was incredible. <laughs> Russell's Russell's observation that in almost every task that Asim's done, squirty cream has made an appearance. Because last last week uh, he had to make a snow globe and he used the squirty cream, so he must have got through you know a can a can of task. That was just, it was, oh man. For someone to go, oh, this is so hot. And then for the, the, the <laughs> just pouring <laughs> out of his mouth. Oh, well, you're next to a tap. Well, you're next to a tap with Amazing. cold water that famously not only cools things down, it doesn't produce like volume that gets bigger as soon as it hits your mouth as well. It was Maybe amazing. just do that. Yeah, it was Rather amazing. than using squirty cream like it's a fire extinguisher. What was the, um, the score that uh, Asim got for that? So he got three. He got three points because he did eat some of his pancake. Uh, quite, Alice yeah. did not eat much of hers at all because it was raw, yeah. and also yeah. she shook the thing out. So it was two points, which is quite generous, really. Uh, yeah. And Russell got Russell, Tim, and Lisa all got five points because they all made Fair pancakes enough. and had a good go at eating them. Alex whispered to me, um, "You'll be interested in Alice's reaction because she totally loses her mind." <laughs> <laughs> I really thought I'd understood it, but no. I don't know what the bit was where you were supposed to just shake until everything fell out of the headband. Yeah, you yeah, all, all imagined, all of those yeah. things. Yeah. Weirdly, you managed to leave in there a whisk, two spoons and a spatula, which are the things you need to make a pancake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Live task. Get an egg as close to the centre of the target as possible. You must stand on the spot while taking your turn. You must roll two of your eggs. The person whose egg is furthest from the centre of the target after each round is eliminated. The person in first place goes first. Now, this is where Russell immediately undoes all of the cool points that he's earned doing the cricket earlier. Yeah. He was so full of confidence that he tried to do a little unnecessary flick of the egg and smashed it on the floor. It was the most fabulous bookend to an episode that had started on such a high. And as yeah. you say, it was just meant to be a slight flourish of I'll just choose this weapon and yeah. uh, boom. And and what I loved was that he still scooped it up and threw it. Like that was He gave it a good go. So obviously you, your reaction your reaction to the cricket earlier was huge and then and yeah. then this happened. Did this yeah. undo your cum? It uh, did it undo my cum. No, I came again because I like seeing people <laughs> fail. <laughs> And if you want to know, I come harder at people failing. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what answer to expect, but I'm glad it was that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, li I like nothing better than seeing somebody who's a bit puffed up show off and then fail. Yes. Crash oh, and burn, yes. yeah. Yes, oh, that's that's right well, up my street. Thank you very much. Don't worry that was that great. Master. Yeah, yeah, that was great. But that was also the sort of thing I can definitely see myself doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was very me. Oh, and I mean, I think I would have been, yeah, confident and been like, right, what egg am I going to melt? Well, I've sat in all the eggs. Um, <laughs> so it was what it yeah. was one point for Russell. Uh, yeah, Lisa, this isn't really up her street. She just got it done. Sit down on the bench. Lovely. Two points. Uh, three yeah. points for uh, for Alice. Four points for Tim and Asim bringing home a five, which is rare and always exciting to see when Asim yeah. can, uh, can deliver the five points. Very that exciting. Was... That was a hard one. That was also, and I like any of those games where you're um, there's no consistency each time you have a turn. So it, you're sort of each time is like the first time. You can't kind of go, oh, my last throw, I can kind of deduce I need to be harder or softer because you had a different yeah. object every time. You couldn't take anything egg. that you'd right. So you couldn't take anything from the last turn. That those those ones are quite tricky. My only thought with the ostrich egg was try and roll it 
end to end rather than on the side to see if that would sort of slow it down. But then I guess it's a bit more unpredictable oh. as to where it's going to go. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. But I was um, awful at all of those tasks like that. Any sort of throwing and aiming uh, task yeah. in the studio, I was just, just dreadful. Did you have a live audience? You did, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So we had and pandemic really, silence. Yeah, that the audience really changed those studio tasks. Like they're really, really fun because they go crazy for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas, yeah, when in the, the non-audience uh, ones, it always felt like it was sort of like uh, a Black Mirror episode or something from Saw. <laughs> just when it was your turn and you could just hear the muffled sneeze of one cameraman. Yeah, <laughs> you feel like it's being broadcast in living rooms uh, across the country for sort of like businessmen who've paid a hundred thousand dollars to watch normal people experimented on. Yeah, yeah. or or the or it's not being filmed. None of this is being filmed. This is like a social experiment where there are cameras at you, but nothing's being recorded, and we just want to see yeah. what you do when you think you're on yeah. a TV show. It's a satire on desperation. Yeah, 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 um, like, yeah, completely. Uh, so ours was just like a silent studio where we all had to stand a long way away from each other um, and do things to silence. Like even if you won, yeah. there would be the same silence as if you had lost. Like it was exactly the same. I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed yeah. sapping all of the values out of it and just going, this is just a thing. You either lost or you won. There's really no, there's no emotional response to it. I guess that that added pressure of trying to make the audience laugh has gone as well. So I'd imagine it's quite quite relaxing. Yeah. Incredibly relaxing. It just felt like I, I'm still surprised that any of it went to air because it didn't feel like it was happening at the time. The five points did not help Asim uh, it, in the episode. He still came second bottom, just beating yep. Alice. Uh, and then Lisa, Tim second. Tim's doing very well here. Uh, and then Russell wins the episode with 21 points. Lisa still in the lead in the series as it shall remain. Mm-hmm. We had a couple of emails for you. Uh, mm-hmm. would, you like to an- would you like to answer those? Yes, go. Um, Jenny from Devon said, since the brilliant series 11, what is the moment from your time on Taskmaster that's, that gets commented on the most? Love the podcast. Thanks, Jenny. Hmm. The one that gets commented on the most. It's weird. Um, there's not. I think the one that I'm haunted by is the golf course. With the golf course where I sent my teammates into hedges for like 28 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. Lee and Mike finished in three. They did theirs in like three minutes. And I had sent mine into sand pits and they were falling over and I just could I couldn't come up with the right configuration of words to help them. Yeah. I still think about that and I, I still think about how badly that went and how long it went for and feeling the fatigue of my teammates because it was a hot day and they were blinded. Um yeah. and I just couldn't help them. My brain couldn't figure out well, you a could, way to make you, cause you- you could help them because you were the one telling them exactly where they needed to go. The, the, I'm aware literally of that. The only, person, the only person who could help them was you. Which is so unfair because I could not help them. That is what is... You did not have the skills. I did not have the brain power to do this. I um, love that. Charlotte Ritchie running like she was a Muppet and uh, and then a- activate Jamali, I believe. Activate, was the... activate Jamali. <laughs> But also the way she fell into the sand bunker. It was so, so funny. It's like, yeah, like when you think there's another step and there isn't another step, so yeah. your legs yeah. straightened out. I mean, everything about it was just, I'm haunted by that, which is not the same as the task that people talk about the most. But that's the one I think of. Whenever I think of Taskmaster, yeah. I think of that and feel ashamed. One more email. Uh, this is a great email from Lily in NYC. Question for Sarah. Series 13 lineup is Bridget Christie, Ardlo Hanlon, Chris Ramsey, Judy Love and Sophie Duker. Out of the five, who do you predict will be your biggest competition on Champion of Champions? I think it's going to be between Bridget and Sophie. Yeah, biggest competition. Yeah, I do, I do. I think it'll be either of them. I think it could be Bridget. Bridget is also a sporty person and you've got to watch the sporty people. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. So, you, but, so you, if if Bridget wins that series then you're you're going to be pretty pretty scared during Champion of Champions that she's coming for you. I think that there's a mental discipline that sports people have. Yeah. Morgana won series 12, so you're definitely yeah. facing Morgana. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you how do you feel about that? I don't know more. I've only oh, I'm trying to remember if I've met Morgana. I'm pretty sure I've met her socially. I think you two are going to get on like a house on fire. Uh, I think you're going to you might come to blows and I don't know how long that fight would last. I think you versus <gasps> you versus Morgana is going to be amazing to watch, I think. Do you? You think it could come to blows? No, no, I don't think it's so at all. You're both great fun, uh, but you're both you're both champions for a reason. And I think if all Bridget right. ends up in that lineup, it's going to be the most insane champion of champions of all time. I think that oh, could turn man. into a cage fight. Really? <laughs> See, that's okay. That's now that is. I mean, I think okay. So I think I think Bridget could be the sleeping giant. That's yeah. my feeling. That's my feeling. Okay. Um, and I think. Sophie Duker, I think, could also. Be, I think she's going to be really good. I think she's going to yeah. be really solid. I mean, I I know that in the champion, what is going to be awful for me is doing champion of champions. I'm not looking forward to it. I am not looking forward to having my authority questioned, and that's what's going to happen. I'm going to have, and that's and it's going to be devastating. Um, I wouldn't want to face any of them. I think they're no. they're really they're really yeah. Um, but the thing that I have got working in my favour, I'm trying to think of the thing I've got working in my favour. What have I got working in my favour? Let's end it there. Sarah, thank you very much thank for you coming so on much. the Taskmaster podcast. I had such a wonderful time. <laughs> uh, we always ask our guests to rate their experience on the Taskmaster podcast between one and five points in the style of the Taskmaster. Please give us our score, Sarah Kendall. Um, okay. I'm going to say, uh, um, four. And the reason why it isn't five is on me, not on you. I think I'm, okay. I think I talked about bell ends too much. <laughs> um, so I think I want Daisy to chop out maybe one reference to bell ends. Okay. One, then... one reference to bell ends will, will, will go. So when you're listening back to this listener, um, do bear in mind that however much Sarah mentioned Bellens, there was one more than that. Great. And then when that has happened, my enjoyment will be a five. Thank you very much, Sarah Kendall. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was a really fun chat. Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, uh, with chat about series six, episode eight. Our guest next week to talk about Series 6, Episode 8 is Dave Gorman, the cheat. Will he come back and apologise for all of his horrible cheating? He didn't last time he was on the podcast. Uh, I find it difficult to believe that he will be any more apologetic this time. But thank you very much to Sarah, and we're looking forward to chatting to Dave. We will see you next week. Goodbye. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!